this week's question, which has to do with uh, sanitary waste and drainage fittings and um, design. So let's head on into the classroom and I'll join you over there. So here we are on the plumbingacademy.com's classroom. As you can see, this is our website, www.theplumbingacademy.com. Again, you can go to our, this is the home page view. Uh, we click on to the home page and we go over to practice testing. Brings up our practice testing page in one, two, anytime now. Here it comes. And again, what we're talking about tonight is when we go to our sample test, our sample test page being right here, click onto that and it brings up the sample test, which is free. Um, you just have to put in your name, your email address. Some people kind of put in fake names and fake addresses. That doesn't help. And if you, anytime you, we also have these other quizzes in here that if you want, after you do, you can do any of these, click on any of these and bring up different quizzes and we're, we're kind of updating this time and time again. So you can go to that at any given time. Tonight we're going to talk about a plumbing code um, waste and vent system subject. I'm going to show you a drawing in a second that's part of this question. It's one in a series of 15 questions that are part of the plumbing sample test. And in a few more, probably a month or two, we're going to be getting into the sample gas fitting test, which is also free. Again, it's 10 or 15 questions right now. And this is going to be a little bit interesting. We're going to read the question. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go to the drawing because attached to this is a drawing. And there's the drawing in front of you right now. And some interesting things about this drawing that I want to talk about really quickly is for those of you who are apprentices or journeyman plumbers going for a master plumber's license, and for those of you who may be interested in the trades, you look at this drawing and there's, there's we assume a lot of these um, symbols are recognized. So it doesn't say what this is right here, or what this is here, or what this is here, or what this is here. But you see that the symbols have a similar feature, and that they all look kind of the same. And one of the things is I erase that for a second. This right here, for all of you that don't know, when you look at this drawing, it's a three-story residential building. How can you tell that? As you go on, as you study, as you learn, as you get more and more in-depth into the trade, you're able to recognize drawings, um, whether they are drawn isometrically or not. This is not a real isometric drawing. Isometric meaning it's going to show more offsets and angles. This is like a straight-on view that you would see in a lot of code books and even in a lot of exams and a lot of worksheets you're going to see of a, a three-story residential building. And some of you are going, how the heck does he know that's a three-story residential building? And it's only because as you get into this and as you study and as you look at things more, you're able to recognize that things like this, that represents a kitchen sink. So it's actually a kitchen sink with a clean out under it. A lot of codes are now requiring either a trap that can come apart or a clean out, whether it be an end clean out or a dandy clean out. So on all three floors, you have kitchen sinks. And then these other symbols, this would be a water closet or a toilet. Uh, same thing here, water closet and a toilet, or a toilet, water closet, toilet, lavatory or a bathroom sink, lavatory or a bathroom sink again and again down here. And then over here, this could be shower or bathtub, a shower or a bathtub, a shower or a bathtub. Some of you are going, well, why don't they just write that on there? Why don't, they, why don't they just identify what those symbols are? And mainly it's because that you, in classes you learn that, you learn to recognize the symbols more readily, and you're able to identify um, what is actually going on in a drawing. Like over in here, some of you may be going, well, what the heck is this over here as I draw the circle? That's actually representing a future event. And down here, what's that? That's representing a laundry connection or a wash machine connection. So we have a whole bunch of things going on here. Even more things that we'll talk about what the, 
what the dotted lines mean and what everything else means. But for the purpose of the question, we're going to jump back to the question for a second. We're going to go over the fact, the given, and the question itself. And the fact is, plumbing code installation waste and vent system subject. Plumbing installations can be divided into three distinct yet related stages of install. Underground or rough in, above ground or rough in, or top out or tack out and trim, or trim out or trim finish. Meaning you have a rough, you have, you have an underground stage of a rough, you have the actual building stage of a rough installation, and then you get to finish where you're putting in the fixtures, you're trimming out the fixtures. So the given part is, is re re please refer to the figure below when answering the following question. So in the sample test, the figure would be right there. You'd be able to see it. The question is, what answer below shall be considered most correct to complete the following code waste and venting related statement? In Massachusetts and in other jurisdictions around the country, what is the minimum size of the piping identified by the letter A? So we're going to go back to the drawing real quick and we're going to find the letter A. And what we're going to be dealing with in this particular drawing is a term that we, that most every model and custom code talks about is drainage fixture units. Drainage fixture units are extremely important when you are sizing a drainage system or a venting system. And that's kind of where you get your pipe size. So we're just going to talk about the pipe size tonight and what happens, but a drainage fixture unit is very important when you are sizing piping. And we're going to take you a little bit there, but we're not going to take you all the way there because naturally we want you to like come and join us for classes and talk about and learn about in the right way what we want to do. So in this case here, I'm going to like take some of the marks. Uh, I was going to try and take some of the marks away take some of the marks away that I drew <laughs> to like make some room for you make those disappear you can see me on the little screen doing that and pull this out of the way for a second actually maybe we'll change the color to blue and we'll talk about the piping here at A so the piping is literally pointing to the pipe right above that little circle which we call a dandy clean out and the dandy clean out in this case is at the base of what we call a stack. And this would be a soil stack in this case. So you're looking at everything that's above that particular point of the drainage system. And on an exam, they're going to do this to you all over the place. And even as you're learning and as you're in school, you arrows will be pointing at different locations, whether it's on the venting system or it's on the drainage system, wanting to identify either how many fixture units are available or are being drained through the piping at that point. Or, and for those of you who don't know about fixture units and those of you who are studying, again, we'll talk about that later, a lot of details. But it's all about fixture units. And I guess the quick answer to here, for those of you who know fixture units, um, and what size piping these would be, it, if we look at a kitchen sink, you're always to assume the minimum size. And the minimum size of a trap on any kitchen sink is inch and a half. And the inch and a half has so many fixture units per size. In this case, inch and a half trap, inch and a half pipe, in this case for this fixture, is going to have two fixture units. So what you end up doing is you end up calculating all the total fixture units. So this has two, this has two, this has two. A lavatory, and we'll change the color again of our pen so we can like kind of highlight a little better. A lavatory, which I'll circle the lavatories here. A lavatory is served by an inch and a quarter waist. And an inch and a quarter waist is actually the definition of where a fixture unit comes from and what that means. And we won't talk about that right now. But in the case of a lavatory, it's worth one fixture unit, one fixture unit here, one fixture unit here. But the interesting thing about this drawing is that when you have a, a bathroom group, a bathroom group being a water closet, a lavatory, or a tub and shower, 
it allows you a certain reduction in fixed units and where you don't have to completely go where if this was a tank type water closet it would be four this would be a tub or a shower which would be two so in this case here we'd have four five six seven in this case when you have a bathroom group you're allowed to remove one so the bathroom group on every floor here is worth six fixed units total and this is a point where you, if you miss it in any of the model codes, the Massachusetts codes, any of the custom codes, they all may be slightly different, particularly in cases where the fixtures now are using less water, less water running through the faucets, less water being flushed down a toilet. So you end up with these fixed unit values that are directly related to the size of the pipe. So in this case here, let's say we have 6, 12, 18, and 6 more would be what? 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, something like that. Somewhere around that. So there are 24 fixed units, say, here. But there's also requirements here of, about toilets and definitions and code. So all that comes into play. A lot of things that seem like a lot of stuff to remember. There are code requirements within this diagram that are virtually in play here that you need to know about. And that's going to come from any of the study, studying that you do in class, reading the code book, making sure you do taking some practice tests, coming onto our website, doing some of the things that a lot of the stuff that we have on this site will help you get better and better at sizing the wasting, venting, and drainage system. So in this case here, our piping at the location where we have A, based on what we know in the code for language and we know for the fixed unit value, at that point right there, believe it or not, it's going to be 3 inch. That's going to be the minimum size at that point. There are going to be some people that are going to tell you, hey, no, that's 4 inch. It is not 4 inch. When you take the values and the language of the code, it is actually three inch. And that's a really quick overview with a lot of information and really a lot more information that we can provide you regarding fixed units and fixed unit values and the size of piping. So that's all we have right now for you. Um, again, this web, we can go to our website at www.theplumbingacademy.com. Uh, we can talk to you about anything you need to know, and that's all we have for tonight. Try us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, um, and we thank you for being here. We'll see you next week at the same time.